Have you ever wanted to try Linux but you don't have a spare PC to install it on? Or maybe you want to have something running on Linux in a kind of a more permanent fashion and you don't want to keep booting off you know, a USB flash drive or something, you'd like to run Windows and Linux side by side. Well, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. And today I want to look at how you install Linux on a virtual PC. In particular, we're going to be looking at VirtualBox and then we're going to install Ubuntu on VirtualBox. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So a virtual machine allows you to emulate a PC on your computer, whether that's on Windows or on Mac OS or on Linux, you can use virtualization software so that you are running a separate PC inside of a window. And using some clever trickery, that's got hardware acceleration. So it's not all done in software. It actually accesses your real CPU, actually accesses your real memory. And combined together, you'll have your host, which is your desktop PC, and you'll have the virtual PC running side by side, which means you're actually running two operating systems systems one inside of the other. Now for today what we're going to talk about is how you install Ubuntu on uh, VirtualBox. So I'm going to assume that you've already downloaded the .iso file for Ubuntu or for whatever Linux distribution you want to use and then the next step is to install VirtualBox which we'll look at now. Okay so the first thing you want to do is go over to virtualbox.org and download that. There's a big button here, you just click on the download, follow through the instructions, install it on your PC, and then once it is installed, you need to run it. Okay, so here we are inside of VirtualBox. The first thing we want to do is create ourselves a new virtual machine. So you go up there and you click on this new icon, and you need to name the virtual machine. Now, if you type in, for example, here, Ubuntu, which is what we're going to install, it automatically recognizes that it's a Linux system and it's in fact a Ubuntu, so that all works really easily. So we click next, and now you have to decide how much memory you want to give this virtual machine. Now, it's recommending a minimum size of uh, one gigabyte. Here in my machine, I've got 16 um, gigabytes, so I'm actually going to be happy to give four gigabytes over to this virtual machine. Now, it depends on how much physical memory you've got. If you've got eight, then you might want to reduce that maybe down to two gigabytes. If you've got less than that, then you want to reduce it down to one gigabyte uh, because if you use more than you've got, you're going to start end up with problems with swapping and, and it's going to be really, really slow. And they show here this green area, which kind of shows you what is kind of the acceptable uh, limit depending on how much physical memory you've got. So I'm going with four gigabytes there. You might need to go with less. The next question is we want to create a hard drive for this virtual machine, it needs to have a hard drive. So yes, we want to create a new hard drive, please. We want to use a native virtual box disk image. So yes, please. Now, the question is, do we want a dynamic one or a fixed one? Now, a dynamic one grows according to how much you install. So if you install only one gigabyte's worth of data, only one gigabyte approximately will be used on your hard disk on your desktop. If you go with a fixed size and you create a 60 gigabyte hard drive, it will create a file or a series of files that are that total up to 60 gigabytes, even when there's no operating system installed, because it's fixed size. Now, fixed size is faster. So it's faster when you want to when you've got a system that needs to do lots of input and output lots of writing to the disk you want that speed for me i normally go with dynamically allocated because it's convenient because it doesn't use up loads and loads of my hard disk space when i'm just in kind of installing a test system but if you want to do let's say lots of compiling or lots of app development or something or you're running a server then you might want to go with fixed anyway let's go with dynamic and then it asks how big do you want it to put it 10 gigabytes is a bit small let's bump that up to 60 and then you hit create. Now we can see here that our virtual box has been created and we want to just go up here and change some of the settings. Now, for example, in system here, I normally get rid of the floppy drive because no one uses a floppy drive nowadays, so that's not important. Here in display, I might want to give over more memory for the video memory. Let's go with 64 megabytes. Cool. This is for 2D stuff, you know, for holding all the desktop and everything. But the most important thing is you want to go over here to storage and this is where we're able to insert a CD like like it was uh, actually physically inserting one using an ISO file. So click on the empty CD slot here, go over here to this little uh, CD icon and choose virtual optical disk. And I've got here the Ubuntu ISO file that, ISO file that I've downloaded from their website. So we click on OK. And now we can go up here and click start, which will boot our virtual machine.
So the virtual machine process will uh, begin and it starts to boot and we'll just let that boot for a second. And so we have the option, we can either try Ubuntu or we can install it. Now, of course, we've got a virtual machine here, so we want to install it so that every time we boot our virtual machine, actually it boots straight up into Ubuntu. So let's just click that. We can set the keyboard. What else can we do? We can say what type of installation we want. We want a normal one. Yes, we want to download any uh, third party stuff so that we get all the extra drivers that we need. And of course, we want to download updates while installing Ubuntu. Now, the next tip is what do you want to do with the hard drive? Now, because we're running a virtual machine, our hard drive is empty. We just created that file a moment ago, 60 gigabytes. It's completely empty. We don't need to worry about preserving any other data. So we're just going to go with, yep, erase that disk and install it. Just go for it. Don't care. Yes, please do it. Go ahead. Now, obviously, if you're installing this on a real machine, uh, then you would want to be trying to see whether you're preserving your existing data. But here in a virtual machine, we don't mind if we obliterate everything. Now, when you type in my name... Okay, that will create for us a computer name. It will pick me a username and then we'll type in a password. Okay, and we'll go with login automatically as well because this is a virtual machine, so we'll be starting it up. We'll be in control of it, so that's absolutely fine. And that's it. Now the installation will start, so we'll come back to this in a few moments when the install has completed. Okay, so the installation is complete and now we just click the restart now button. Now, of course, this is restarting the virtual machine, the machine running here in this window, because not restarting our actual uh, host operating system, which is uh, Windows in my case. Now, it tells us now that we should press enter, and which is what we're going to do, and the virtual machine will now reboot. Okay, now that's rebooted, we want to do the first thing, and that is to maximize this window. As you can see here, we're running Ubuntu inside this window, but it's a bit small, so let's just hit the maximize window here, and you'll notice that actually the desktop will resize automatically. Okay, and now here we're going through the steps of just using our uh, Ubuntu system for the first time, so we can just click next, uh, next, uh, no, I don't want to send any info at this time. Okay, we're all ready to go. So here we are running Ubuntu in a maximized window. And you'll notice here at the top, there is a menu bar. And this is not the menu bar for Ubuntu. That's all this stuff down here. This is a menu bar for the virtual machine. So for example, you can click machine and you can pause it or you can cause a shutdown to occur. Now, one thing you definitely want to, want to do is go over to Devices and install a Guest Editions CD image. And this will basically install some drivers to Ubuntu to make it play nicely with the, uh, the VirtualBox software. Kind of install some drivers and things. Uh, just type in our password. Okay, so that things like cutting and pasting via the clipboard work between the guest operating system and the, the host operating system. Okay, and that's it installed. One other quick thing just to show you is you can go over here to view. We can now actually go to full screen mode. Okay, and it tells you to remember which is your host key. And in this case, it's right control. And now this will switch over to actually being uh, a full screen. So there's no menu bar here at the top. We're running it just like I was running this uh, on my monitor. But you'll notice down here at the bottom, there is a little menu that you can click to that gives you that same access. And if you press right control now and F, we can go back to a maximized window. Okay, so that's it. Ubuntu running on a virtual machine using VirtualBox. And there you go, that's how you install Ubuntu on VirtualBox. Now I use VirtualBox all the time, it's a great piece of software, and it's a really good way of having all these different environments, all these different things set up, that with a few clicks you can have a Linux box running with Fedora, you can have a Linux box running with Ubuntu, you can have it set up to do Android development, you can have it set up to do other kinds of development, and it's all just there in that nice little self-contained uh, virtual machine. It's really, really useful. So my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. You know what else I'm going to ask you? Please subscribe, please share, and please let me know in the comments below what you think about VirtualBox and running Linux distributions on a virtual machine. Okay, well that's it. I'll see you in the next one.